Welcome to City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. In this episode, high school seniors with the Austin Independent School District have an exciting new opportunity to work face to face with policymakers at City Hall. Plus, the City of Austin is recognized by Senator John Cornyn for helping Austinites fulfill their dreams of becoming local business owners. But first, Austin Mayor Lee Leffingwell and City Manager Mark Ott took a moment to honor the emergency workers that responded to the horrific plane crash at the Echelon Building in North Austin. Police, fire, and paramedics were personally thanked for their quick response and collaboration. This was not a heroic act. This was a cowardly act. It was a repulsive criminal act perpetrated in rage without any regard for the sanctity of human life. But for the grace of God and the courage of Austin's first responders, hundreds of our neighbors might have died last Thursday morning. There's nothing here to celebrate. There's nothing about the perpetrator to honor. There's nothing of value in what happened here last week. Instead, there's only profound sadness, a deep sense of loss, that will live in the hearts of many in our community for a long time to come. I'm extremely proud of the speedy and collaborative response from all of our emergency services personnel. Uh, as you might imagine, uh, effective incident command is critical when scores of first responders show up at a scene like the one we saw last week. The fact, the mere fact that we were able to rescue and treat every person who was in a position to be saved is a testament to the skill and professionalism of our fire, police, and EMS, EMS services. 50 lucky seniors from Crockett and Aikens High Schools will be selected to participate in a new leadership development program known as Austin Corps. The year-long elective class is a joint partnership between the City of Austin and the Austin Independent School District. Austin Corps will offer courses on local government and students will get to work with policymakers and staff at City Hall during the fall semester. The reason we've created Austin Corps is simple. Our most valuable resource as a city is our young people. The young men and women sitting behind me here today are Austin's future. If we can do more now to educate and engage Austin students in civic life, then our entire community will ultimately reap the reward. It's a strategy that gives our kids the real life experience that they need to be exposed to the jobs that will make a difference in a community and also give them uh, the, uh, the support in curriculum and instruction to take it to the next level in their academic classes. You know, what, what's important to us in my profession uh, is to bring young people along, you know, to introduce young people to, to, to local government. And there are managers all over the United States who are committed uh, to doing that. So I think that this, this idea, this vision of Austin Corps is very much consistent with a commitment that, you know, I made in regard to my pursuit of this profession uh, many, many years ago. So I'm really proud to, you know, to, to, to really be a part of it. In addition, these students will complete an internship with the City of Austin and will also work in small groups to plan and lead community service projects. If successful, officials hope to expand the program to other schools. Residents are reminded to pick up their trash. While it seems like an obvious statement, the Watershed Protection Department continues to find junk like empty cans and yard waste stuffed inside our city storm drains. Here's a look at how littering can cause an even bigger mess in our city. Basically, we're out here today cleaning one of Austin's 32,000 storm drain inlets. And what we're really trying to get the word out today about is that we really don't want people in the city littering or throwing their trash on the ground, uh, blowing leaves into the streets. Because what happens is all that stuff ends up getting washed into our storm drain system. And one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to clog the system, which means it won't work properly when it rains. Instead of water running into the storm drains, it might pool around the inlet, it might flood the street, or um, it's going to get washed further into our creek system. 
A lot of these items we, found, we find in the storm drains are things that you can dispose of properly through your recycling. We find a lot of plastic bottles, a lot of aluminum cans, things like that. You can simply place those in your single stream recycling cart. Probably the biggest thing we find is uh, yard trimmings and leaves. And those are things also that you can put in your yard trimmings collection, which is a week weekly collection we do here in Austin. Um, so you can simply dispose of those properly by using your solid waste services instead of putting them in the storm drain. Now it's time for an Austin City Council update from Larry Schooler. The speed of the internet in Austin could get much faster. The Austin City Council wants to work with Google on increasing high-speed internet access in Austin. Google wants to build a very fast internet network, more than 100 times faster than most people have today and Council decided the city will apply to become one of the places Google builds that network. Stay tuned for ways you can participate in that process. Council obtained the rights to more than 4,000 acres of land in West Texas to use for wind power generation. The city ultimately wants to get 30% of its electricity from resources like the wind and sun by the year 2020. Grant funds approved by Council will pay for lifts that help physically disabled individuals board canoes, kayaks, and other vessels. The city hopes to promote the activities of injured members of our armed forces. Council also agreed to work with the state of Texas on a hike and bike trail between Balcones District Park and Walnut Creek Park in North Austin. The Northern Walnut Creek Trail will connect St. David's Hospital and the Austin Community College Northridge campus to numerous neighborhoods in the area. It should be finished in April of next year. Finally, Council voted to expand the Northwest Recreation Center by 7,000 square feet. You'll eventually see a classroom, a fitness room, and a multi-purpose room, among other improvements. In all, the City Council considered 80 items at its February 25th meeting. Its next regularly scheduled meeting is March 11th. For City View, I'm Larry Schooler. If you'd like to watch the most recent City Council meeting, please visit the Channel 6 website at cityofaustin.org slash channel 6. Well, after almost two years of public input regarding Austin Energy's future generation plan, Mayor Lee Leffingwell held a final town hall meeting to review all of the proposed ideas. Panel experts representing all facets of the community, from large industrial customers to low-income residents, addressed the crowd of more than 200 people. The audience was able to submit questions via text, email, or note card. Uh, we are not proposing this plan um, in order to avoid building uh, new capacity. Uh, we actually have enough capacity with our current power plants to pretty much meet our needs to 2020. If there is a shortfall, it's very little. Uh, the plan is more designed to shift our type of resources from fossil fuels to non-fossil fuels as opposed to needing to build new power capacity in order to keep the lights on. Austin Energy is recommending a generation plan that achieves 35 percent renewable energy by 2020 and offsets 800 megawatts through energy efficiency, which is the equivalent of a large power plant. The Austin City Council is expected to vote on this issue sometime in March. To watch the entire panel discussion, visit cityofaustin.org slash channel 6. It's no secret the City of Austin supports locally owned businesses. In fact, Portfolio.com recently named Austin the nation's top city to launch a small business. That's because the city's small business development program has helped more than 11,000 customers who have started their own business or are expanding their existing businesses. Senator John Cornyn and Mayor Lee Leffingwell paid a visit to Parkside, an Austin restaurant that owes its success in part to the program. First, I want to thank Senator Cornyn for uh, coming here to Austin, his hometown, to uh, talk about small business with us. And we think we've enjoyed a lot of successes. And it's really gratifying to uh, be able to share what we've done here uh, with folks at the national level because uh, we think we have been successful here. I couldn't think of a better place to come uh, than back here to Austin to listen to what you've done so successfully uh, to reach that uh, great uh, accomplishment of being the number one uh, small business um, city in the, in the country. As a, as a working chef and business owner, I really don't have the time to, to stay up and, and, 
and formulate. I have an accountant who does parts and parcel, but to really do the nitty gritty of the loan program, I need somebody who can help me. Um, and that's what the city was able to provide. We were invited today to come speak to the senator and the mayor about the vitality of small business in Austin and how the city supports and encourages entrepreneurship. It was really an honor to be invited to speak about our business and our experiences in Austin. And I hope that the senator will be able to take this back to Washington and help other cities. I was here today um, to explain how the Small Business Development Center our program helped my small business um, grow from grassroots, just from the idea to actually um, implementing the services. I, I, I definitely would support anyone to open and start their own small business, no matter what it is, because a lot of us have great ideas, and they, be, they may be a little bit hesitant to start just because it may be intimidating. But if they have just a little bit of, of drive or a little bit of ambition to start a small business, they should. The Small Business Development Program offers a variety of resources, including a walk-in technology center and workshops for every level entrepreneur. Some of the most popular classes are on QuickBooks and accounting software and social media. The city also offers assistance on writing business and marketing plans. If you'd like to learn more about this program, visit austinsmallbiz.org. And that's all for this edition of City View. I'm your host, Leslie Sopko. Our next episode premieres Friday, March 12th. Thanks for watching.